Over the last week, Google has done over a half dozen updates to Notebook LM, and they are absolutely insane. So Notebook LM looks very similar to before. We have our sources on the left, and you can see all the different sources I have on this notebook called Japan, in the center, we have our chat, and on the right, we have our studio. But the studio has a lot of new features, a lot of new things now. So audio overview works exactly the same. You click it, it is going to start generating an audio overview. So on audio overview, we can actually click the pencil and we're going to get some options here which never existed before. So we have deep dive, it's going to go really in depth based off whatever your notebook has. We have brief, so imagine like a bite-sized, really quick way to gather information. So you have a notebook, it's filled with information, filled with notes, videos, websites about a topic you want to learn more about, you can just click brief and you can start learning about that topic really quickly. Maybe you want to upload something from your work or a paper you wrote or some sort of information that you have. You can say, hey, can you critique my work and make it better? How, what can I make this? What can I do to make this better? What can I change? So you can actually have a whole podcast, an audio overview of a critique of your work. There's also a debate option. So it is like between two hosts and they're going to give you different perspectives. So you can say, okay, here's this topic. I don't know how I feel about it. You can click debate. They're going to give you different perspectives and then you can and have like an informed opinion about the topic. And with all of these, if you've noticed, there are sub options. So for this one here, deep dive, we can go like shorter, default, or longer, whatever we want. We can even say, hey, can you try to focus on this source or this topic within this entire notebook? Or say we go to brief, you don't get these options at all. Critique, again, shorter default, debate, shorter default. Also part of the update is the language. So English is the default, but you can see now there's over 80 different languages that you can pick from to have these audio overviews in. So that is just audio overviews and there's a lot more to cover in this video. And speaking of videos, video overview is exactly like before, but video overviews is really cool. We have mind maps that we can create and reports. So the reports is completely changed. So before we only had the ability to do a briefing doc. So that was just like an overview of your sources with key insights and some quotes. And then at some point they added like a study guide, but all this kind of stuff was not like fleshed out and very good. Now it's much, much better. So you can see here, we can create our own so we can craft our own report. We can create a briefing doc. We can have a whole study guide with like quizzes and all sorts of key terms. There's blog posts that we can create. So with all of these, and you'll notice the, the little pencil icon still, we can click it and now we get a ton of options. And you can actually see here, describe the report you want to create. So we can actually have it create a blog post for us based off all of the different sources that we have selected. And when I say that, I'll show you, let me just exit out real quick. You can see here, I actually have this one selected. I can unselect, I can say, okay, now I wanna create a report that is a blog post based off just the ones I have selected. And if you notice here in this big long prompt where it says, hey, you're a thoughtful writer, it doesn't actually say anything about SEO. So we can even add that at the bottom. Hey, you're an SEO expert. I want my blog post to rank really high. Please do this, please do that. You can change it up. You can say, hey, I want my blog post to have this formatting or that formatting. So it can create a blog post based off all your content and we can just hit generate and we're gonna start generating this report and you're going to see it here. So you're gonna see it down here. We can go and generate some more reports. So maybe you wanna do a study guide. And again, you can see here, you're a highly capable research assistant and tutor. So we can generate a study guide and we're just making all these different reports that we can use and access. So maybe we wanna have a content strategy memo we can do. And this suggested format changes depending on the notebook. So I've seen different versions of this depending on my notebook. So just this one notebook suggests these ones here. So you can actually see here like a traveler's narrative. So I have this whole notebook about Japan. So it's saying, hey, can you follow a traveler's 10 day journey through Japan's most iconic cities? So we can actually generate that now and it's generating based off our notebook, based off what we have. So it's already able to tell, hey, this is very heavy about Japan. Let's generate based off that. Just to show you, this is another notebook I have about just random videos I've uploaded. 
we can actually click reports and you're going to see these suggestions this time around. So we still have create your own briefing doc, study guide, blog post. Those seem to be the standard, but now you can see here we have like concept explainer. So I can actually use this to explain a concept within my video, or maybe we want to do a tool comparison because I just uploaded a whole bunch of videos of me covering different tools. And now we can say, Hey, could you generate something about different tools? And it can do that. Or maybe you want to, have it explain a concept, we can do that as well. We can quickly generate and get back whatever we need based off the type of content we have uploaded and our sources. So let's come back to the Japan one for a second and we have some of these done. So you can see the travel guide and this is just the mind map that we have. So we can see planning a trip, we can see common mistakes and this is such a, an amazing tool for pretty much any type of content for anyone who wants to learn. It truly is incredible. So that is just the mind map we can see here. This is the study guide. So we can see like a quiz and we can go through all the different questions. We can see the essay questions and we can see the answers. So maybe we want to do this for something more like education related. Maybe you're a teacher or professor, whatever. You can actually use this to come up with questions or your student, you can upload your homework and you can get back an entire study guide for whatever you're learning. Our blog post is also done, so we can click that and we can see it. So we have like Beyond the Bullet Train, Seven Surprising Truths About Traveling in Japan. So it's a really good catchy title. We can see how it's all broken down. We have our little subheadings. We can kind of scroll down the biggest myths and it looks like a very good and solid blog post. So this is amazing based off all these different videos and different websites that I have included. And we have a pretty good and solid blog post that we can just use. So it created a good blog post for us now. And we can just click this, we can copy our content and boom, we have a blog post. We can come back to studio. Now we can see our traveler's narrative is done. So we can click that and we can actually see like, hey, part one, this is four days in Tokyo. We can kind of scroll through. We can see it gives us information about like the metro meals. We can see day two. It's actually giving us an entire itinerary based off all the different sources and knowing that our entire notebook is about Japan, which is absolutely insane. And you can even see like tips about like riding the bullet train and what to buy and what to store in your luggage. It is wild. If we come back to our YouTube notebook, we can actually see our technology briefing here. So we can kind of get a brief about like the capabilities of VO3 and then we can kind of scroll down and then we can see like the Gemini application engine and it's just kind of going through all the different things. We can also see the concept explainer. So this is going to explain different concepts to us. So if you want to bring your video idea to life, you can do that. Your, your idea to video creation, you can do that. And it explains to you how, and it tells you all the different things and it talks about Google flow and creating ingredients and everything I've included in my videos since I've uploaded all the videos to my notebook. So it is really cool that it's able to take these things and say, Hey, this is what your notebook has. These are the type of things that we can create based off your notebook, which is absolutely insane. So you can actually see here, this is like doing a tool comparison and we can actually see the clause result versus Gemini's result based off what it generated from my videos. So I do like this prompt thing where I give the models a prompt and I say, Hey, I want you to generate a game that's inspired by Minecraft or subway surfers with cars. So it's literally doing an entire comparison based on that. And you can see the final verdict of the strengths and weaknesses of each model, which is wild. Notebook LM is incredibly powerful and it seems like Google keeps adding new features, new tools and new customizations to make it even more powerful. I love to know what your thoughts are down below. Do you use Notebook LM? How often do you use it? What do you use it for? Let me know all in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis and like the video. It tells the algorithm you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more of it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video.